Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time for us to jump into the actual graph algorithms. Like I said at the end of last episode, I'm sorry it took so long for us to get here, but we're here now and that's what's important. Today, we're going to begin with breadth first search, which is one of the simpler algorithms you can do on a graph. And hopefully this shows you, you know, the way you have to think when it comes to working with graphs in general. So yeah, hope you're excited for this. You're watching episode 4 of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. Today, we're going to talk about breadth first search, which very simply is just a method for you to traverse an entire graph. Now, why is it called a breadth first search? Well, you'll see. Just look at this example and you may be able to tell why. So we do breadth first search on a tree. You know, not too complex. We start off at the root, we go down to the next node, and it sort of spreads out slowly from a point. Let's try this on a graph instead. As you can see, the same thing really holds from the starting point that we've chosen. The visited nodes moves out slowly, like it's spreading outwards. That is the idea of a breadth first search. We want to visit as many of my neighbors first before we move on to visit their neighbors. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look at the algorithm itself and we're going to do that while tracing it on an undirected graph. I should stress at this point that we can actually start breadth first search from any vertex. It doesn't matter, we will eventually visit every single vertex in a graph, no matter where we start from. So without further ado, let us look at the algorithm itself. We will need two data structures. Firstly, a queue, as well as some sort of a list to actually keep track of whether each node has been visited. The simplest way would be to just have an array of booleans, and you can switch it to true when a node has been visited. Of course, if that's the case, we will have to initialize our boolean array to entirely false, and our queue should also be initialized and be empty. Then we begin by picking whatever node we want to pick. This doesn't really matter, as I've explained before. And queue that node and mark it as visited. With that done, we have all the preparations in place to actually begin the main loop. Notice that we actually have a while loop, and this loop will run as long as there are items in the queue. So the first thing we do is we dequeue the next item in the queue. This gives us a node, and we can begin processing whatever we want to process. Now, this is actually a pretty interesting point. Breath first search is actually just a technique for you to traverse the tree breath first. It doesn't actually perform any computation at all. So if you were to use breath first search in your program, you actually want to traverse the graph and do something along the way. Breath first search doesn't help you do that thing you want to do, you of course have to actually implement it yourself. Which is why in our pseudocode, I'm simply going to say, do whatever you want to do. So after you've dequeued a particular node, you want to do whatever processing you want on that node. And once that is done, we can continue with the logic that we wanted to do for breadth first search. All we need to do is to prepare for the next iteration. Basically from this node you've picked, you want to look at all of its neighbors. For every single one of its neighbors, you will mark it as visited and then add that neighbor to the queue. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how the algorithm actually iterates. From the next iteration on, basically what's happening is we're looking at the first neighbor of our first node and the subsequent iteration, we're looking at yet another neighbor, so on and so forth. So well, hopefully you have a general idea now. Let's continue with the trace and hopefully that reinforces the idea. So we dequeue our second node and we try to add its neighbors again. Notice how we actually avoid an infinite loop by not adding the first edge. As long as an edge has already been visited, we don't want to add that to the queue again. Otherwise, you know, this whole search will never end. So yeah, rinse and repeat. As long as we keep doing this, we will search further and further away from our first node and eventually we will hit every single node in a graph. 
Of course, if you are doing some form of computation, that means that is a way to actually process every single node in a graph. Of course, we can actually see visually that our algorithm has visited every single node. But the algorithm doesn't know that. It still sees items in a queue, and it's still going to have to take some time to chew through them and decide that there is nothing else to do. But yeah, that's it. We've essentially traversed the entire graph in a breadth-first manner. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to very quickly introduce a new idea to you, but I'm not going to explain it. We're going to explain this later on. This time, let's repeat the entire process, but do one more thing. Whenever we add new nodes to the queue, let's draw a line from the current node to the new node. So let's very quickly trace our way through the algorithm and let's see what we get. Basically, we've injected a whole new set of edges into the graph, but maybe at this point it's not very clear what they mean, so let's take out the original edges and just leave these new ones in. In fact, if I were to pick up all these nodes starting from the root node, Notice that we actually have a little tree. We have eliminated all the edges that aren't strictly necessary to connect this entire graph together. And what we are left with is a tree. In fact, this is called a spanning tree. And of course, you can see why it's called that. It is a tree that spans the entire graph. So that's actually all the time we have today. So let's wrap it up. Today you've seen breathless search and I've also given you a little tease of a spanning tree. Eventually, we will of course look at spanning trees in greater depth as well as you know discuss the time complexity of breadth first search, but that will come later. At this point, you should really be focusing your energies on making sure you understand that you know breadth first search works the way it does. That's all there is for this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time. You're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.